Out of the box, the Windows operating system can have some serious vulnerabilities and misconfigurations that can lead to your system being compromised. In this video, we're going to define what Windows security policies are and how we can configure them both on a local system and on systems that are part of a corporate network domain. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you like my training and you want more, check out my website at johngood.com to get access to training courses without distracting interruptions or advertisements. Make sure that you sign up for my newsletter using the link in the description to get your free copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. You can also join me on the Discord server. The link is in the description. All right, let's get into the video. The very first thing that we're going to do in this video is walk through how to apply security policies to a local system. This means a single system that we're logged into. Most people aren't going to have to configure security policies for an individual system, but depending on the environment that you work in, it's totally possible that you could be working with isolated systems where this is required. We're also configuring a single system first because we're going to work our way up configuring many systems on a network, but we need to start with the basics. To configure security policies on a local system, the first thing that you're going to do is go to the start menu, and then you're going to type gpedit.msc. And you're going to get this window that pops up here. This is the local group policy editor, and I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see it easier. And this is where all of the settings live for the local computer, okay? So you have a bunch of different areas. You have computer configurations and then user configurations. So depending on what you're trying to configure, you're going to have to go to the correct place, but this is where they all live. So you can see there's sections for security options in here that you can define. There's sections for user rights assignments. There's even audit policies and you just have to find what you're looking for specifically. So once you change a setting in this window, it is automatically applied to the local computer. You don't have to hit save or anything like that. So if I were to change one of these and hit okay, it's automatically gonna get applied. I don't have to close out the window. So be very careful when you're changing these settings because obviously if you change something and you mess it up, it could cause issues. As you can see, configuring a local security policy for a single system is really easy to do. Now let's shift gears and start talking about how we can configure security policies for our corporate network domains. We just saw how to configure security policies on an individual system, but the problem is that that method does not scale when we start building out an entire network of systems. We need some method to mass configure systems that not only pushes out that initial configuration, but it also keeps the configurations updated with the latest policy. Enter group policy. Group policies centralize the management of our security policies for all of our systems in our network domain. The first thing that we need to do for our test network is create a domain with Active Directory. Active Directory or AD is the central service that will push out our security policies to all the systems on the network and that are joined to our domain. If you aren't aware of what a domain is, it's the term for Windows systems that are connected to a network and they can share services like authentication, DNS, and file sharing, just to name a few. A system will not join a domain by default. An administrator has to actually configure a system and join it to the domain. All right, now let's configure Active Directory services for our domain. Step one is we need to go to the server manager. So a lot of times this will already be open, but if it's not and your screen just looks like a normal system, you can press the start menu and then go to server manager or you could also type server manager in by just starting to type. So we'll go ahead and open that up and dismiss this because we don't want to see that again. And this is where all the features basically are configured for the Windows Server Operating System. This is the home screen. So we're going to go to manage and then we're going to go to add roles and features and go ahead and hit next. And we're going to select role-based or feature-based installation. Next. 
And then if you had multiple servers in here, you could select the different servers and that will come in handy later once you get a bunch of services running. But for now, we're going to do it on this server, which is the local system. And we're going to select Active Directory Domain Services. And then you can see that it will add the required features for the domain services. We'll hit Add Features. And then Next. And then on here, we don't have to select anything additional. It's added what we need. Go hit Next. And then we can go ahead and hit Next again. Now you'll see that you do have this restart the destination server automatically if required. So you can always check that if you want it to automatically restart. We're going to leave that unchecked for now. And we're going to hit install. And we'll check back in once this is finished installing. All right, so now it's finished installing. So we're going to hit close. And then you can see up here this little triangle icon here with the notifications. We're going to click that. And we need to promote this server to a domain controller now. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And then because we're creating a brand new domain and we're not connecting to another network, we need to add a new forest. If we were adding this to an existing forest and creating a new domain or just adding it to an existing domain, then we could do that as well on these other options but we're creating a brand new domain and new forest. For the root domain name, we're going to use test.lab. Now with this right here, if you use your actual URL, so your actual website for your company, if you were creating this in a company network, you need to make sure in your DNS server, your domain name service server, that you actually have entries to make sure people get to the correct website they're trying to go to your company website because let's say you don't host your actual website internally or on this server and you use your website for this. So like johngood.com is my website. And what will happen is my systems that are internal and joined to the domain, they will try to resolve internally. So I need that DNS entry that routes me to the correct place. But for this example, it's not really going to matter. So test.lab is going to be our domain name. Now you can select the functional level. If you were going with, let's say, a domain that had other operating systems in it, so like Windows Server 2008, 2012, basically some of those lower operating systems, they can't operate at this higher functional level, this 2016 level. So you would have to change those. But because this is the only computer that we're doing it in and it's a brand new domain, we're going to use the latest and greatest. And then we need to enter our password for the directory services restore mode or DSRM, the password. This password allows administrators a backdoor access to the database in case something goes wrong later, but it doesn't provide access to the domain or any services in the domain. So we're gonna go ahead and put a password in here. And this will be a super secret password that I'll put in here. And then we'll hit next. And then this is giving us an error about DNS we're not really worried about that for this purpose, so we'll go ahead and hit next. And the NetBIOS domain name, this is what's used when we're actually trying to log in. So when we provide our username, it essentially puts this before our username to indicate that we're logging into the domain. For this purpose, we're just gonna leave it as is. You could change it if you wanted to, but we're gonna leave it as is and hit next. And we're gonna leave this as the default settings, so hit next. Now on this screen, you can click this view script and this will actually give you the PowerShell script for deploying this. So if you wanted to keep that kind of on the side or if you wanted to see what it was actually sending for commands, there you go. And we're gonna hit next. And this is going to go through some prerequisite checks before we start our installation. Okay, and then we're not worried about these because this is a test environment. And it says we passed all the checks successfully, so we can hit install to go ahead and install. All right, and it says this server was configured successfully as a domain controller, and it's going to restart. All right, and then once it restarts, you'll be taken back to a login screen. And if you remember when I was talking about that NetBIOS name, you can see here that it's that test name. So if we were gonna change a domain, let's say we were gonna change to the JG domain. 
then we would do this. We would go to other user and then JG slash, and then the username and the password. And you can see that it changes right here. Sign into JG domain. That's just something useful to know. So we'll go ahead and change this back to the test administrator for our domain. And we'll go ahead and log in. And now that we're signed in, you can see that we have an active and functioning domain. We have these different services that were not there before. So Active Directory Domain Services and DNS is now installed as well. I hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far. If you are, make sure to hit the thumbs up to like this video. And if you think of any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Also remember that this training and full courses can be found on my website at johngood.com without distracting interruptions or advertisements. All right, let's get back to the content. Now that we set up our forest and domain for Active Directory, we need to configure our group policies. So we're going to go to our server manager and click tools and then group policy management. And then you'll see our forest that we created here, this test.lab. We'll expand that and we'll expand domains. We're gonna right click on the domain that we created, so test.lab, and then we're gonna click create a GPO in this domain and link it here. That means we're going to create a domain and we're going to apply it. And we're gonna call this test GPO one and hit okay. Now we're gonna click on our domain and we're going to expand it here. And we're gonna click on group policy objects. Okay, and you can see that I already created a test GPO earlier. That's why I had to create test GPO one. But now we're going to right click on that specific GPO. So test GPO one. And before we actually edit the group policy, know that in our production environment, you can actually disable either the entire group policy or parts of it. So if you see this GPO status, it's enabled right now, but we can disable the user configuration settings, computer configuration settings, or the entire GPO. We're gonna leave it enabled, but you have to be very careful with GPOs because they can result in issues very quickly for your entire domain if you configure them incorrectly. So we're gonna click on edit. Now you'll notice that the configuration window is the same as if we were configuring policies on the local system. If you make any changes here, the entire domain is going to receive those settings or at least the computers that are receiving that group policy. Now, once you apply the settings, group policies can be updated a few ways on a computer. First of all, they update every 90 to 120 minutes by default. You can also go to command prompt. If we go to the start menu and we type command prompt, we're gonna open an administrator command prompt here. You can type GP update and then slash force. That will update all the group policies that are destined for that system. The third way is that you can actually restart the system and it will automatically refresh. Now, if you want to actually see the group policies that are being sent to a specific system, you can actually do this. You change this to the desktop, so we output it there. So GP result, slash capital H and then the file name, HTML. So what this does is this creates an HTML file of all of the group policies that are being applied to a specific system. We'll allow blocked content. And so if I had different policies that were being applied here, they would show up in here. So you can see the actual settings as well as the policies that are being pushed out to that specific system. I highly encourage you to play around with GPOs in a lab environment because it's going to be crucial that you know how to secure a Windows environment in most companies. Question of the day, what kind of experience do you have with Windows Server? And if you followed along and created your own domain with GPOs, which settings do you think would be useful for securing an enterprise? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we talked a lot about group policies and how we can secure Windows environments both on a local system and in an enterprise network. I've said this before, but I highly encourage you to explore the different security settings that exist in Windows. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without distracting interruptions or advertisements. And I'll see you next time.